Welcome to Pod Me If You Can, I'm David Farrell. Today's film comes from this five pack. It's the 1991 noir film Dead in the Water, starring Brian Brown and Terry Hatcher. Pod Me If You Can, movie reviews. Lawyer Charlie Deegan, played by Brian Brown, enjoying an American career after cocktail, runs a successful law practice and is campaigning to be appointed a judge in the High Court. The problem is his wife Olivia, Anna DeSalvo, has all the power in their marriage and has inherited her father's money. The marriage has been over for years, with Charlie having an affair with his secretary Laura, played by Terry Hatcher. Together, Charlie and Laura attempt to get away with the perfect murder and take Olivia out for good. Can a clever lawyer that deals with murder cases every day get away with it? Now, the biggest success out of this film has been the director, Bill Condon, who went on to direct Kinsey, as well as Dreamgirls, two of the Twilight movies, and this year's Beauty and the Beast. This film has a noir storyline shot with all the tropes of a detective noir film including all the horizontal blinds you could ask for. It's based on a Harry Whittington novel called Web of Murder. It's a really good premise, like it's really interesting to wonder whether or not a lawyer would be able to get away with the perfect murder. And Terry Hatcher and Brian Brown in the lead roles, it's an interesting film to even grab today. However, Brian Brown's performance is kind of wooden, and uh, they really hit you over their head with this voiceover. The voiceover is a problem that a lot of novel adaptations have. When you're not quite sure how to convey the story in a more visual medium, the dialogue is very heavy, and as well as getting him speaking dialogue, to hear it in his head and hear his thoughts is, is really overkill for a viewer. This is a young Terry Hatcher, uh, pre-Lois and Clark by two years, and um, she's kind of seen stealing in this role. You can see that she's uh, one to watch in 1991. The film features a bug analogy, which didn't quite land for me. He refers to his wife as a bug, and I really feel like it was probably a good trope of the novel that uh, kept coming back, but here in the film we just saw a lot of flies and spiders and things as part of the cinematography, so true fans might have enjoyed that, but it just seemed a little out of place until you realised it was based on Web of Murder, this book. While it's kind of a comedy of errors, because lots of things go wrong despite the fact they've planned the perfect murder, uh, it's also... its tone is too serious to be a farce. And the music doesn't help, it goes a long way making it feel like a comedy. There's a major problem with the plot, too. His wife has all the money and therefore all the power in their relationship, and he's married into money in this situation. They're unhappy in their marriage, and the wife... Uh, the only solution is to knock off the wife, to kill her off. But the real thing that would be happening here in this unhappy marriage is the wife, who has the house and the money and a prenup, should be able to just divorce him. Like, no, at no point do you kind of get her side of things. You think maybe, because he's on the edge of a judgeship, that uh, she might be hanging around to see if he becomes a judge and there's some prestige and social value in that, but they're so miserable that you just say, well, why doesn't she divorce him? But we're only getting his side of the story. Ultimately, the film feels really cheap. They live in this mansion, which is great, but then the law office feels like they've just redressed a corner of the mansion and that they didn't have enough locations. It doesn't look like a regular office. It looks very kind of fancy. There's also a court case going on in the film that doesn't really resolve well. I thought for sure that it would mirror the events that Brian Brown's character, Charlie, was going through. And then you would have this kind of resolution at the end where either the two nicely tied together or it mirrored his plot and gave him advice or a solution to what was going on with him. But neither occurs. There's a real intensity to his performance in the scene where the murder is actually committed. Charlie chooses to do it himself, which is actually pretty full on. And then, But the problem after Charlie commits the murder is that he takes the corpse, which he's, he's drowned his wife, he takes the corpse out of the water and into the boot of his car, only to almost be caught by a police officer, worry for a moment, and then bring the corpse back into the water afterwards. It's a strange step in his plan. While there are a few errors that prevent this film from being anything more than kind of five or six out of ten, uh, one of the major issues I have is continuity, shot changes, um, 
just that thing where he's in the water and he's bleeding and the amount of blood in the water changes from shot to shot. Things like that took me out of it. But mostly it's the unmemorable dialogue. Now I'm sure as a book this works. Uh, it's a different medium in film though. And it could be the delivery from Brian Brown. But I just watched the film and I had a lot of trouble recalling any memorable dialogue that his character may have had. Mostly because it was also voiceover as well. While the dialogue is generic, and it's a fairly straightforward noir film, there's nothing wrong with it in terms of like it being an enjoyable enough experience. Again, it's interesting to see Brian Brown and Terry Hatcher in these roles, but these issues with continuity, the kind of hokey music and voiceover, and the unmemorable dialogue, and the wooden performance of Brian Brown, all kind of trigger towards it being uh, an unmemorable film, ultimately, and it prevents it from being a classic. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out our podcast at www.podmeifyoucan.com.